The title of my lesson for you is What's Your Desire? Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. What is your desire? You know, I'm a man of definitions. I like to always tell people what the definitions of things mean. So, desire. I'll, I'll define it for you. Desire is a strong feeling or wanting to have something. Or you wish for something to happen. And so, you know, I, I went online and uh, I, I found this website. It's called Medium. It's an online platform where people post things. Uh, I also went to Forbes. And, uh, and I wanted to see on these two websites, what are the things that we as humans desire the most? What, what is it that we desire as a people? And these are the top five things that we desire as humans. One is happiness. Two is love. Three is inner peace. Four is wealth. And five is freedom. And I believe that if more people desire to walk with God, we would be happy. Right. Yeah. Uh, we would know what love is. Yeah. We would have an inner peace. Right. Yeah. We would not be so concerned with getting rich. Yeah. Right. And we would be free. <laughs> we would have freedom. <laughs> now this morning, if, if, uh, if you find yourself desiring any of these things, then that means there's somewhere in your walk with God the desire is lacking. Wow. Come on, Let's go. The desire for God is lacking if you desire any of these five things. Wow. Come on. Wow. Talk to me. You know, today I want to take a look at an account of a man who walked with God during a time when no one else did. Okay. Let's turn over to the book of Genesis. This morning, what is your desire? In Genesis chapter 5, you may think Noah, but it's not. In verse 21, may when you get there, Amen. it says, When Enoch had lived for 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God, then he was no more, because God took him away. Now at the first glance, when we look at this passage of scripture, we really don't see too much, other than the fact that this, he, he, he walked with God for a long time, 300 years. That's a long time. But when we, when we look deeper into this passage of scripture, we can, we can pull out things. Things, things are going to be revealed. And something I like to do is, uh, if I want a little bit more context in the passage of Scripture, what I'll do is I'll look at the interlinear Bible. Yep. So, so it gives me the Hebrew. Hebrew. So I, I wanted to see what did it say in this particular passage of Scripture. Yeah. And it doesn't say that Enoch walked faithfully with God. Oh. All it says is Enoch walked with God. Wow. So I was like, okay, there might be something here. So I wanted to see what it meant to walk with God through the Hebrew. Now, the word walk in Hebrew is halak. And it, and it means a close familiarity. It's like a friendship. Like you, you, you're familiar because of your knowledge. And then with is the word a. And it means proximity. It's, it's near. It's right. regarding distance or space. Yep. And so we see that Enoch came near to God. Wow. Yeah. So for 300 years, now I, I did the math on that, okay. and that's over 100,000 days. Wow. Wow. 
Over 100,000 days every day, Enoch walked faithfully with God. He drew new to God. He came closer and closer and became more and more familiar with who God was for 300 days consecutively. And when I think about that, I'm like, man, that takes a lot of humility. Like, like man, like, think after 100 years, Enoch, he, he probably thought, man, like, I, I already know a lot. I already, a hundred years, every day, I, I know a lot about God. Man, even after 200 years. But it says that for 300 years, every day, Enoch walked with God. And if we're going to walk with God, have a desire for God, we have to have a humble walk with God. And that's my first point. A humble walk with God. Let's go to Micah chapter 6. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Preach it, bro. In Micah chapter 6, we're going to pick it up in verse 8. Come on, bro. It says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. This is what God desires. He wants us to walk humbly with him. And now we may think to ourselves, what, what does that even mean? What, what does it mean to like walk humbly with God? Like, do I just, do I just like... Just gotta be humble. Like if someone disciples me, do I just need to take it? Amen. Uh, do, do I just need to take the lowly position? Like, yeah. what does it mean yeah, it to be humble in our walk with God? I believe Deuteronomy chapter ten will give us a little bit of insight. All right, bro. Let's go. Yeah. Like this, bro. Take it there, bro. Come on, bro. Deuteronomy chapter ten. Come on. In verse twelve. says, Now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And we'll stop here. Here we learn from Deuteronomy, this is what God wants. He wants us to fear him. And you know, when I was a young Christian, I thought, like, man, like, this guy wanted to be scared. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but no, to fear God is to have a reverence. Yeah. It's an admiration. Yeah. It's an awe. It's a respect yeah. of who God is. Yeah. That we fear losing the relationship yeah. with God. Yeah. It says to walk in obedience and to love Him. We know that that is love for God, yeah. to obey His commands. Yeah. It says to serve the Lord, serve the Lord your God with all your hearts and with all your soul. Yeah. You know, when I when I think of, of serving, we, we've all gone to restaurants or, or food place of, of some sort. Yes. And uh, we get served. Right? We have a waiter, we have a waitress, and they yeah. serve us. Yeah. Right? They are offering a service. And in the same way, when it comes to our relationship with God, we are an offering. As it says in Romans 12, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Yeah. So this is what God wants. He wants us to offer ourselves wholeheartedly. All of your heart, all of your soul, all of your being. This is how God wants us to walk with him. And I believe we have an example that's lived out in this, in Jesus, in Philippians chapter 2. Let's go there. In Philippians chapter 2. We're going to pick it up in verse 3. 
It says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Just, just briefly, when it comes to our walk with God and our relationship with God, uh, we have to be humble with one another. That's what the passage of Scripture says. It says, in humility, value others above yourself. So, you know, whether it's a brother's household, sister's household, whatever it may be, we got to remember that. We value each other above ourselves. Amen. Yeah. But if we keep going, in verse 4, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus offered himself willingly. When he was on this earth, he offered himself to everybody. Jesus performed many miracles. He taught. He healed. Jesus fulfilled every command. He walked in obedience. He had a reverence, although being God in the flesh, had a reverence for the Father. Yeah. Jesus leaves you and I no excuse yeah. to walk in humility with God. Mm -hmm. But what's your excuse this morning? What it. haven't you died to? Here it says Jesus in humility died. He, could, he became obedient to death and death on a cross. So if there's anything in our lives that we may be struggling with, and maybe we struggled with it for two months, three months, four months, five months, whatever it may be, it's because there's still a pride in our heart. Ooh, I think it we don't see our need to be humble and come before God to die in those areas. God will give us what we need as long as we humble ourselves. You know, there was a, a time when I, uh, I was a young Christian. I still am a young Christian, I mean. uh, But I had just got baptized. I, I was going to school at San Jose State University. And I was living in a brother's household. And there, there was probably about 10 of us. Uh, two, two beds, one bathroom. Uh, it, was, it was incredible. I encourage you to experience something like that. It's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> And um, there was a brother. There was a brother there, and um, he was a freshman. So at this time, I was I was 24 years old, and he was about 17, 18. And just everything he did, I just for some reason I was just bothered by it. <laughs> I, I, I can't lie. I, I can't make it up. Literally, almost like everything this brother did, I struggled with. And um, I remember. I remember there was a time he, he, he must have come up to me and asked me a question about school, you know, because he's a freshman, yeah, yeah. right? And, and I remember my response was not loving, it was harsh, it was mean, and um, I said something along the lines of like, like, you would ask me something like that, wouldn't you? What? Like, like that's, that's, that's I, I just gotta be open, that's, that's where I was. And, and I got discipled. Ole was my disciple. And, and, uh, and he discipled me. And every time he heard me, or every time like he saw it, he you know, got down and sat down for the time, he would tell me, hey, bro, you got to be loving. You're not loving. Hey, bro, you got to be more patient. You're not patient. And, you know, there, there came a point in time I was like, okay, like, this, it, I guess it's true. Uh, I need to change. <laughs> and, and so what I had to do is I prayed every day for months. It wasn't just, a, you know, a few times throughout the week. Every day for months I prayed, God, please help me be loving. God, help me be patient. Every day I prayed, God, please help me know what I'm about to say before I say it. I take it. Every day for months I prayed. And then one day, I was reading the book of Proverbs. Nice. And in Proverbs 15, verse 1, it says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, 
but a harsh word stirs up anger. And I remember this brother, he came up to me, and he said something. And you know how, like, you're, you, you, like, you get internally hot? Yeah. yeah. That's how I felt. I, like, internally, I was heating up. And then I remembered that passage of scripture. Come on, bro. And I just, I, I paused for a moment, and I didn't say what I wanted to say. <laughs> I, I had a more gentle response. Frustration and anger just went away. It went away. And I realized, man, I have to pray daily. I have to pray continuously in order to grow in the area that I struggle in. We have to see our need for God's help. And the only way we can do that is with humility. Yeah, right. Great, bro. You know, I believe God right now is calling me deeper in that love and patience. As uh, my wife and I, we just moved here two weeks ago. Uh, still unpacking. Uh, I, I got a new job and I started working about a week ago. And uh, we have a new boy. And, uh, you know, God is calling me deeper and he's showing me. Although I might have grown in patience before. I might have grown in love before, but now there's a greater need to grow in. Yeah. And I have to come before God yeah. every day. Come on, bro. Come on. You know, the challenge I want to give you comes from Luke chapter 18. Okay. Let's go, Sherbo. Come on, bro. Challenge is bro. Luke chapter 18, verse 18. And in verse 1, it says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think. Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is an incredible passage of scripture. I love it. And it really teaches us. It shows us how much we need to have faith. That the amount that we pray and we continue to pray, despite the lack of what we see, is dependent upon our faith. But the challenge that I want to give you is simply to pray every day to embody the godly quality that you lack. So pray every day to embody the godly quality that you lack and pray until someone else notices. So pray for it until someone else notices it. They come up to you and say, hey, you are patient, you're loving, you're kind. Pray every day until they see that difference. And I also want to challenge you to pray every day for the rest of the year. Don't, don't go a day without praying. My second point for you this morning is a faithful walk with God. So we got to have a humble walk with God, but we also have to have a faithful walk walk with God. Now we know from Genesis chapter 5, Enoch walked with God for 300 years. He became more and more familiar with God. He got to know who God was for over 100,000 days. Let's look over here at Proverbs chapter 9. And we're going to see a few passages of scripture that really show us the importance of knowing God, being familiar 
with God. I believe it'll help us be faithful in our walk with God. Come on, bro. What's up? In Proverbs chapter 9, and in verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So here we see from Proverbs that it is important that we must know God. We must know who God is. We must understand who God is in order to walk with Him faithfully. We have to understand that it's not enough just to show up to church. It's not enough just to come on Sunday. It's not enough just to go to midweek. We personally have to know who God is. I believe Romans chapter 10 will also help us understand how important it is to know who God is. In Romans 10, we're going to pick it up in verse 1. It says, Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites, and these are God's people, the Israelites, is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. And we'll stop here. Here we see Paul saying, my own countrymen, they are passionate. They are excited about God. But their zeal, their passion, was not based on knowledge of who God is. And we also see that when we know who God is, it will help us be humble because they failed to submit to God's righteousness. And they sought to establish their own. So when we know God, it's easier to humbly walk with Him. But we can submit to God's righteousness. We can know God based off of the scriptures. You know, you can write this one down. But in Isaiah chapter 5, I'm going to go there. In Isaiah chapter 5, and in verse 13, it says, Therefore my people will go into exile for lack of understanding. So we see from this passage of scripture in Isaiah, a lack of understanding led to enslavement. Wow. In Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, wow. you can write that one down or you can go to it. Hosea 4, verse 6, it says, My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. So we see whenever we lack knowledge, we don't know who God is, it leads to destruction. If we go over to 1 Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 5, and in verse 8, it says, Be alert and of sober mind, your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in the faith. Now we see that there is a roaring lion. And that is Satan. It's the devil. And he wants to destroy us. And it says that we must be alert and a sober mind. And I put it before you, the way that we do that is knowing God. But he also says, stand firm in the faith. Now we know, where does faith come from? Romans 10, 17. The word of God. So this is our weapon. This is what we need to know God. This is what it's all about. It's all about knowing who God is. And the only way we know who God is is through the scripture. 
This will help us have a faithful walk with God. Proverbs chapter 2. And in verse 6, it says, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. See, this is the only place that we get wisdom. We get true knowledge, true understanding. It comes from God. That's why it's so important. That's why I believe Enoch walked with God for 300 years. Every day, knowing more and more about God. In Proverbs chapter 8, we're going to see what it says about wisdom. Proverbs 8 is all about wisdom. Uh, it's, it, it tells us the importance of wisdom, what wisdom is going to lead to, what a lack of wisdom would lead to. But in Proverbs chapter 8, in verse 35, it says, For those who find me find life and receive favor from the Lord. But those who fail to find me harm themselves. All who hate me love death. An intense passage of scripture. And I believe this was all of us before we studied the Bible. You know, I, I remember the time when I was uh, living in San Jose. I was going to San Jose State University. And uh, San Jose was, uh, was a whirlwind for me. Uh, the first day I moved to San Jose, my roommate invited me to go out. And that, like, and that like set the pace for me in San Jose. And so every weekend I wanted to go out. Every other weekend we were going out. Every day I found myself indulging in drugs, smoking marijuana. Anytime we went out, I found myself getting drunk. The only thing that was on my mind was immorality or impurity. This was the life that I lived in San Jose, and I worked a job, and as soon as I got off on a Friday night or a Saturday night, my only aim was to get to the clubs quick enough before they stopped letting people in. And this was just a vicious cycle that I found myself in week after week after week after week. I, I was someone who loved death, according to the scripture. I didn't know God. I grew up religious. I grew up going to church. I only read the Bible while I was in church. I prayed with my mom sometimes when I was in high school. But I didn't know God. I knew God as much as I knew Michael Jordan or LeBron James or Kobe. Like, like I didn't know God. I knew of God, but I didn't know who God was. And so I got the opportunity to study the Bible. Um, you know, Ashton Hughes is the one who met me uh, around December, and um, I would love to say that I studied the Bible at that time, but I didn't. I um, I was in finals, and uh, finals were more important. And uh, about a month later, Olay reached out to me, and uh, that's when I started studying the Bible. And uh, on January 20th of 2019, I got baptized in Christ. I found life. I found wisdom. I received favor from the Lord. And that's all of our stories. Because we came to know what Jesus did. Who God is. It's what brought us here. It's what brought us salvation. You know, we can't have a faithful walk with God without becoming more and more familiar with who God is. And that's through the scriptures. We have to have a personal walk and relationship with God. Come on. You know, my challenge is simple. My challenge is to have a quiet time. Read the Bible. Get back to the basics every day. Go the rest of the year without missing a time with God. We have to know who God is. You know, I want to close out here in Hebrews chapter 11. Today, this is all about getting back to the basics of our relationship with God. We must walk faithfully and walk humbly. And we're going to see why 
in Hebrews 11 and verse 5. It says, By faith Enoch was taken from this life, so that he did not experience death. He cannot be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. We see Enoch, because of his faith, was taken from the earth and went to be with God. And what did we learn in Genesis 5 about Enoch? All we learned is that he walked faithfully with God. Every day he became more and more familiar with God. Every day he drew near to God. So we cannot overlook the importance of us drawing near to God every day. Learning something new every day. Praying every day. Because it says that he was someone who was commended for his faith as someone who pleased God. Because of that, he received a reward, and he was taken to heaven. Yep. God will reward us when we earnestly seek him. You know, another word for desire is earnest. Do we, do we desire to seek God? Do we earnestly seek God? We have to get back to the basics. Again, it's, it can't be about church. It's not about the international Christian church. This is about our relationship and our walk with God. You know, today I, I pray and I hope that you are inspired to go after your walk with God in a deeper way like never before. To walk humbly with God and to walk faithfully with God. Yes,